मैम एम आई ऑडिबल गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन एंड अ वॉर्म वेलकम टू ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट एज as वेल एज द पार्टिसिपेंट थ्रू यू ट्यूब लाइव स्ट्रीम the entrepreneurship cell and the placement cell in association with the center for counseling and wellness management and in collaboration with the mou partner ps modern law college is pleased to organize this national webinar on career options in law opportunity and counseling it gives me immense pleasure to introduce today's to introduce and welcome the speaker for today the resource person mr prabhakar timle the principal staff and students of both of the institutions without further ado i request our principal the fountain head of vidya vikas mandal gr kare college of law to accord a warm welcome to the virtual gathering yeah thank you rosana for initiating the proceedings and uh, it is an absolute delight to be uh, 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 a uh, uh, gathering which involves two colleges uh, modern law college in pune which is our mou partner and of course our college so on behalf of uh, dr sunita adav who is the principal of modern law college on my own behalf on the staff of both colleges i um, firstly congratulate the cells of the kare college of law as well as the cells of the modern college of uh, modern law college um, the cells in particular the entrepreneurship uh, cell as well also the cell related to career counseling a lot of activities that we do and we took a, a, a further step this time to collaborate and have a national webinar i warmly welcome uh, mr prabhakar timle uh, who will be of course formally introduced but uh, a very special man for us because he is a former principal of my own college um, i have stepped into very large shoes uh, of mr prabhakar timle and uh, uh, i warmly welcome him i welcome all the participants and uh, i look forward to fruitful uh, deliberations all the very best and hope this is uh, a very uh, involving and enga engaging and uh, learning session thank you thank you so much sir i now request ma'am shikhar kekar to kindly introduce our guest for the day thank you ma'am uh, good morning everyone today on the occasion of this national webinar we we have with us mr prabhakar timle sir uh, he is an educationist on legal and political issues he has served several educational institutions especially as the principal of government college of arts science and commerce at quipim kare college of law margao as well as couple of management institutes he was also the state election commissioner of goa he conducts public lectures on general issues and also conducts seminars and workshops largely for teachers parents and students so with this introduction i welcome mr prabhakar timle sir on the occasion of this national webinar and i request him uh, to enlighten our audience with his knowledge thank you thank you 
thank you for that ma'am now i request um, uh, the resource person for the day sir prabhakar timble to kindly begin for the talk uh, and enlighten our participants sir prabhakar timble yeah. over to you good morning to all i think your uh, audios are uh, off so i can't get your sound back can anyone good morning, just good morning to you sir this is good morning sir good morning so i know you are there good morning hello good morning good morning sir good morning sir ah oh, okay thank you thank you yeah so we will we'll begin we will begin uh today we are meeting uh, to understand the career options in law you are all students of law so you know the career options but uh, we will try to understand if we have to grab those options and if you have to you know be in tune with the opportunities for uh, law graduates then what kind of then what kind of skills uh, we should imbibe and what competencies we should uh, try to gather try to sharpen during our journey uh, for a law degree uh, friends uh, let's start with something uh, you know general uh, you mean the presentation no warmly welcome uh, mr prabhak uh, so uh, uh, why choose any career in a general way okay money excuse me no when i say money everybody will say no 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 because you know our indian culture is uh, speaking about money can you switch on you switch off your audio because there is a echo okay so why choose any career i'll come to that is it no, because you know our indian culture is uh, strong speaking about money yes answer to that yes money yes money is a very great opportunity for us but so we should think that we need to learn uh, can you uh, switch on your uh, switch on your audio that's the learning yeah because we should know when to say enough to money but money is the biggest motivator so when we choose a career and money is there in all uh, careers it's not only in law now we are told okay why choose any career passion i have passion for this passion is something if you have you 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 know mm, uh, go on your career ladder with love with joy and uh, you can uh, it it spurs your creativity you get uh, if you get a career which you do with passion then you get recognition you get name you get fame and you also get money why choose any career oh it's our family business family business can be a factor influencing choice of career family business family profession because uh, you know as children we we learn we we imbibe that in the family uh, we uh, our relatives our parents our uncles you know our elder brothers elder sisters they guide us they can be our uh, motivators but uh, not necessarily 
that every person may choose family business of course it depends on each person's skills and attitudes and what you know, for what things i have passion for but uh, this could be a factor influencing choice of a career but not for all accident <laughs> many people say oh uh, it was just an accident i never planned for it maine kabhi socha ye nahi tha ki ye mera career hoga it just happened by accident but friends remember accident is an accident it cannot become an incident it the accident is something which is exceptional it is an exception what is my journey to an eventual career you know career is not something which is uh, which you reach without a journey there are some who take a job to move towards a career there are real life stories which you might have read of a newspaper boy climbing up the ladder from one job to another starting selling newspapers and then becoming uh, a international business magnate in our neighborhood we we have seen youngsters you know i i have seen uh, 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 young people starting as uh, physicians doctors and then getting recognized uh, in theater as actors as artists as painters so there is a journey to an eventual career it may it may start with any job job is not an end to your career it is the beginning of the process of a journey and in this process we acquire qualifications instead of saying qualifications because the word qualification um, uh i mean you may get uh, a meaning to that that oh you have to go to a school or a college and acquire degrees by qualification what i mean is competencies and competencies we get through formal education through informal education uh through <laughs> education supported by degrees and certificates and also not supported by degrees and certificates we improve on our qualifications through experience we improve on our qualification by actually working you know that's also a qualification though it may not be formal one and through that we finally reach our eventual career so career decision cannot be an accident it has to be a conscious decision and for conscious decision we need focus we need motivation we need passion we need participation we need staying updated now when we come to law you are all students of law you have chosen that uh, law would be your future career so i come back to the question um, with which i opened my talk with you today what are the skills and capabilities that i need to acquire that i need to sharpen okay, that i need to foster in me if i have to make the best of the opportunities after i complete my law degree course for any student of law who wants to pursue law as a career these are the most important things one is thirst for reading i don't like to read but i want to be successful in legal profession impossible okay then legal profession demands continuous learning learning every day because unless you learn you cannot represent your client and even if it is the same issue it is in it becomes a new issue every time law also changes through interpretation through court decisions through legislation so continuous learning is required 
we we should also know law as it operates in other countries comparative law so the the thirst to learn continuously for legal profession what is more important is an attitude of lifelong learning i mean even i would say that um, for lifelong learning is required for any profession not only legal for but legal it is more required fairly good language skills because finally um it is communication and communication means clarity in language use of the proper words the right words you know a language which uh, uh, the opposite party and the other parties can understand for success in the legal profession we should have these skills to interpret facts data figures just information is not enough analytical skills so when i am doing a law degree what i am trying to do through uh, the uh, the curriculum is not just interpretation but i am trying to acquire analytical skills that has to be on the top of the mind of every law student law learner and a curiosity for research yeah because it is uh, through interpretation of facts data figures that uh, you know uh, we we move forward uh, with that curiosity for research in short i would say that uh, in a um, law school students and teachers have to move from information to skills we have to move from uh, chalk and blackboard to clinics so what are the skills that we need to acquire or sharpen during our uh, journey for a law degree interviewing clients yeah so just information is not enough it is the art of interviewing interviewing is a skill through interview we gather information interviewing uh, means we know to position how we communicate a good interviewer is a good listener not just hear to listen listening is different from mere hearing negotiations with professionals in fact uh, law profession is negotiation we negotiate with professionals we negotiate with the uh, we negotiate in the court with the judges we negotiate with our clients uh, we negotiate with uh, the customers of our clients so negotiations with professionals investigating facts yeah we have to collect facts what facts come to our notice we need to investigate drafting documents that's why language skills conducting a trial legal research advocacy and then finally after we all do this we 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 should have the art of advocacy and uh, you know law students need to be serious but they need to be also humorous unless you are humorous you know it would be a boredom to listen to you and to listen to your arguments and to listen to whatever you put up through your interpretation so humor is an important ingredient in communication it is like the salt of communication the rules of the court of course practical issues of filing so that we learn through uh, you know whatever moot sessions you do in the colleges and those sessions should multiply and whatever visits you make to the courts uh, if you have any uh, what is internship with uh, you need to have internship whether it is there in the curriculum or not or whether your college does it or not during the vacation you should uh, throw yourself into an internship with legal professionals registering etc so the whole focus options are there careers are there career options are there for law students but uh, whether we are suitable for those uh, options will depend on 
whether we have acquired those skills. So where are the options available? One, law firms. What are the options available? Law firms recruit young lawyers. And now you have got specialized law firms. There are law firms specializing in commercial law, IPR, technology law, property law, family law, and, and many other things. So it depends on which you will be focusing yourself on. You know, when you acquire your law degree and a little later, you are reading, you know, your analysis. You need to focus on some area if you want to join specialized law firms. So that is one option. The next option is in the judiciary, the courts and the tribunals. For that, what you require is a degree in law plus practice. You can go into this outlet as an option. One is through a process of ele elevation. You may be elevated uh, depending on uh, your experience in practice and uh, you are standing in the practice. The other option is a judicial services examination. This is mainly for the subordinate judiciary and the eligibility criteria for this and the rules for this differ from state to state. So the, another option is to uh, join the judiciary, the courts and the tribunals. Administration offers a, a big area, administration. Administration is uh, a law graduate openings in administration. You have got openings in the private sector and public sector. Mainly in the HR department and in the corporate affairs department. The HR department, you know, as you know, deals with human resources, salaries and wage payments, uh, other uh, perquisites, contracts with uh, human resources, you know, motivation and growth of human resources in the organization. And, and that's why I say sometimes a law degree with an MBA can be a formidable combination, not just a law degree, if you are interested in administration in the private sector. Corporate affairs department mainly deals with the, the legal side, contracts of uh, the particular concern, the enterprise. Yeah. And the openings are also in public administration. You know, law graduates, there is opening in public administration through state and union service commissions. Every state has got their own state commission for recruitment of posts in the revenue department, taxation department, you follow at the, uh, the Taluka level administration, which is called as the collectorate, wherein uh, law graduates are preferred, but any graduate can, uh, can go through those examinations uh, and tests and recruitment uh, procedures of state and union service commissions. So this is uh, another option available. Then there are allied paths. Allied paths is uh, uh, for law graduates. Allied paths which look more suitable is law department of the government, local self-governing bodies, particularly urban bodies. You know, urban bodies are very big bodies. Uh, don't just go by uh, the state from which I'm speaking in now, Goa. So if you look at uh, uh, other states of India, urban bodies are as strong and as big resourceful in terms of work and in terms of uh, deliveries that they have to do to the citizens requiring uh, law graduates in uh, in their uh, in in their sections in their departments legislature revenue and taxation authorities and ngos so uh, there are professional organized ngos which uh, require legal services and they recruit uh, law graduates yeah so these are the allied paths the research and academic path okay for that we have to move ahead with graduation to a master's later on maybe pursue doctorate in law and the academic path is um, law teaching law publications journalism these are academic paths uh, can be chosen by law graduates yeah so it all depends on your temperament, on your attitudes, and on uh, what kind of area you want to choose, uh, you know, as you complete your uh, graduation. Now, of course, this I have put as the last, start on your own. Yeah. 
because the moment uh, you join any law um, you know uh, law school oh the first thing that you think is oh i'll practice okay so start on your own this is uh, now start your own legal practice legal firm okay legal news publications need not be only legal practice now with this uh, technological uh, changes that are coming place with the digital platform coming there are many youngsters who have started legal news publications they are doing well legal journal publications and legal technology startups now we have uh, legal startups coming as service providers all right yeah so uh, everything can be is available on the tip of the mouse now i want to enter into a contract i need not go to an advocate there, there are startups uh, whom i can approach and uh, the work gets done much faster because uh, all those uh, whatever is the forms drafting that is required all that is available now digital online so they are coming as service providers so that's a very big area which the youngsters are trying to catch up and once you are with this digital technology the whole market for you is the whole world you can sit in goa you can sit in pune and service provide service to your clients on any part of the globe all right so that that's the technology startups law degree facilitates many other options also so uh, the moment i take a law degree doesn't mean my other options are closed i have other options and my degree in law facilitates that professional courses like cost accountancy company secretary chartered secretary then other courses means i can acquire other qualifications like a mba mfs master in financial services journalism because it all depends on finally what option i want to choose you know after a law degree i may do a law degree uh, start a practice i may do a law degree and join a ngo i may do a law degree and join a private firm and then i may acquire additional qualifications like a mba or whatever and then you know pursue my what is my final career aim okay and all other options which are available to any other graduate are also available to a law graduate because all these recruitment is through competitive examinations and in all these areas what is required is a graduation in any discipline so it's not that i have done my law degree so i have to stick to law only it can be i can join any other sector banking finance insurance fast moving consumer goods and so on i can join any other sector and uh, may, may be on the legal side and may not be on the legal side you know like uh, you see today there are many um, engineering graduates who after they are engineering uh, do uh, a course in finance and um, they uh, they join finance companies uh, they they don't pursue engineering they uh, i mean uh, most of the cost accountants that you have in the country are uh, their background is the engineering background their graduation has been engineering so what i mean to say is don't block your mind by saying that i am a law graduate so i have to only think about law law try to find out what actually is your passion what uh, what gives you uh, more joy what gives you more pleasure uh, what will uh, spur your creativity streams and and then you can do uh, you can do further courses mm, i will not say course correction but you can do further courses and you can go to your career ambition as a parting point before we go to questions and answers if you have any i would say that you know values in your journey in your uh, law graduation what are the values that you should try to imbibe if you want to be successful in your profession uh, in your consultancy or in your job whatever you do and i would put it this way a career in law is a career in justice okay so uh, legal education should uh, should inculcate in me or i should get themselves in, injected in me 
okay these are the values democracy secularism and fraternity you know i i i see many uh, law stu uh, students and many uh, you know practicing advocates also uh, sometimes they they tell me uh, sir uh, is it uh, would it not be better if uh, india is under a dictatorship <laughs> and they consider themselves to be as successful lawyers so uh, their lawyerhood has not given them that value of democracy and freedom no no we are giving too much freedom of choice to people choice should be restricted so that's not the value which a legal professional uh, should imbibe then you uh, legal education to that extent has failed you may be a successful lawyer in terms of the money that you make but uh, we are doing disservice to the profession democracy secularism fraternity scientific temper concern for underprivileged positive and progressive attitude towards women respect to environment equity equality and justice confidence and self respect and professional ethics yeah so as we grow <clears throat> from where we are and as you complete your law degree course all those uh, courses that you study what you call as courses or subjects whatever it is content matter if that content matter you know does not uh, give us these values we don't cherish this then uh, uh, there will be our journey in the profession won't be smooth thank you so much Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir, Prabhakar Timri. That was really a resourceful uh, talk by you. I hope I'm audible for everyone. Yes. Yes, it was a very resourceful talk. Uh, a career in law is a career in justice, as you said, it really holds good and it really is. I request now, Madam Savita Bansuri from Modern Law College, to kindly uh, proceed with the question ask sessions. If any students uh, going live on YouTube or through the Google Meet has any questions, may kindly post your questions in the chat box, which will be taken up by the questions person through Madam Savita Bansuri. Yes. Uh, good afternoon all. If it, there are any questions, you can just raise your hand or you can just post it into the chat box and the students who are through, who have joined through YouTube, you can just post it into the live chat so I can just uh, communicate it with the sir. Can I take one question which has come? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, I am audible now to them. Yeah, okay, fine. I mean, one question has come, uh, how do you apply for judgeship? Yeah, yeah. see, uh, for a subordinate judiciary, uh, there is a judicial services examination. So, uh, you just Google for your state, get all the details. So, it's a competitive exam, there will be a written test and there will be an oral interview. And that's how you apply for a judgeship at the subordinate judiciary level. At a higher judiciary, uh, you know, um, people are elevated. There is a uh, collegium which uh, selects people at the higher judiciary level. Yeah. Yes. There's one more question, sir. Uh, what is your opinion about Bar Council stand on mandatory uh, experience of three years for judgeship? I've not heard. She's telling me something. Uh, yes, oh, sir. Okay. I'll I repeat. Another question. Another question has come, but can can they can they hear me? Yes. How do I know they can hear? Yes, sir. Me? Yes, sir. We can hear okay, you. Okay, I take another question. Yeah, just tell her to be quiet. Yeah. Uh, huh. What uh, is your opinion? Hmm. Okay. About uh, bar council stand on mandatory experience of three years for judgeship. What is that? What is your opinion about bar council stand on three year mandatory experience for the judgeship? 
Of course, of course. What would be my stand? Uh, experience is important, and I would say, if you ask me, I would say three years is uh, is quite uh, less. Yeah, because uh, yeah. see, it's only uh, knowing the the status of legal education in the country and knowing how students uh, take their legal education in the law schools. Uh, practice is a must if you want to become a judge. Why three years? If I was there, I would have put it six years. <laughs> oh. Okay. So anyway, one more question has come before you go ahead. Yes, yeah. Sir. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, one, minute. One, minute, one minute. One minute. There was a recent judgment on lawyers cannot practice in any other field other than law. So how do you say lawyers can take uh, other? Yeah. See, what I have said is options for law graduates. If you are a practicing lawyer, then <laughs> then you can't demo in other fields there is a part of professional ethics as per the bar council and all that yeah but other options are available for you if you don't want to take up legal practice that's what i wanted to say sir yes sir can i proceed with the next yeah please yeah there's one more question about uh please explain us about the registration in bar after the law graduation See, uh, see, this, these are uh, very academic questions. So instead of explaining, uh, I would uh, ask the particular student or whoever wants, you know, you, uh, you, you go fishing with the angling rod. Just Google, you get that information. My job is to uh, spur you into thinking. So if you are thinking of that line, always more information you can get uh, just by uh, Googling the thing, yeah. You don't require me, don't require anybody. Be independent. Okay. Yes, so because once you Google, you will get something specific and you will understand it better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, sir. Anything yes, else? Any more questions? I think on the Google Meet there is one more question. So is it wise to pursue two career options simultaneously? Is, it? is it wise to? Is it twice? Uh, like he says, is it is it wise to pursue two career options simultaneously? Like as going into litigation and working as a professor. No, uh, going, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, uh, it is like this. Uh, the, if uh, law schools need to be more uh, practical, then we require uh, practicing advocates to be on the faculty. <laughs> So it is both ways. So unless there are practicing advocates on the in the on the faculty of law schools, uh, uh, we can't achieve the objective of making law education more and more uh, practical, more and more clinical. Okay. Now there are rules of the university governing this because the practicing advocates going or those who go for litigation would be uh, would be like visiting people. Okay. They would not be. They would not be full timers who spend uh, their time from nine o'clock till five o'clock in the institution. So a, a mix is required. A similar thing for the MBA uh, schools. Uh, there are people uh, in top positions in companies who come and address them. Yeah. So that mix is required for law education because law education is professional education. It's not general education. Yeah. Okay. Sir, so, uh, can I proceed with the next? Please. Yeah. Uh, there's a question that can you elaborate on careers in public policy? Careers in public policy. Okay, okay. Public administration. Careers in public administration, you mean? Public policy. Yes, it is written public policies. Yeah, yeah. I think what, what they mean to say is public administration. Yeah, yeah. See, yes. uh, Law graduates are found little more suitable, or they um, uh, they competitively they have got age in uh, competitive examinations when examinations are held for uh, uh, recruitment of government officers. 
in the in the by different states at the collectorate level positions of mamladar joint mamladar deputy collector uh, bdo we call it as a uh, they and uh, revenue departments taxation departments uh, law graduates find it better but any graduate can apply so that is position public administration then there are positions in union public service commission what i wanted to tell the law students is that uh, you can be a law graduate and if you are interested and if that is what is pulling you and pushing you you can definitely even uh, go for you know um, what is that the careers in indian administrative service indian police service indian foreign service indian information service these are union public service uh, union uh, public employment that's what i wanted to tell you yeah now uh, as far as public policy is concerned the uh, law uh, professionals you know there are uh, if there are uh, uh, organizations you know ngos and governmental organizations and institutions uh, who are doing uh, who are doing work and research in public policy so that becomes an allied path also for a law student you know research in public policy because finally public policy gets converted into a new law a new yeah because, see as law students we are taught that um, law engineers the society it is through law that we do social engineering now what is this social engineering social engineering is through laws new laws passed by the uh, legislatures of states and by the parliament and how these new laws come to light they come to light because of research that takes place in public policy so there are uh, centers of public policy research private as well as government funded uh, which are allied paths for law students also okay sir uh, there is one more question as to about the career options in cyber law yeah yeah no <laughs> this uh, this uh, these questions are you know modern questions uh, <laughs> <laughs> students the moment they join a law institute now if you ask them a question what are you going to do i am going to uh, do something in ipr and cyber law that's what the law students will say and once the yeah cyber law it is a um, it is a less tapped area so there's a lot of scope whatever is less tapped has more scope there are few players in cyber law so more players can be accommodated for cyber law you have to be a very studious student you know, who has thirst to read and learn because it is a new discipline less players more scope so more scope more risk more risk more returns yes. yeah so apart from that uh, there is a question like uh, can you sir please tell us on career on convincing yeah yeah i mean uh, it is uh, drafting and convincing uh, it is uh, uh, i would say uh, if the person wants a career they should go more into now uh, technology startup if you get a technology startup, you have a wider market and uh, your services can be low priced uh, so that you can um, cater to cater to a target segment uh, which segment finds uh, lawyers costly <laughs> and through the through a larger segment uh, you know the, the 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 startup also can make uh, reasonably good money because if it is a startup and you are using technology you can reach out to larger people it's not that people have to come to your door and they have to knock your cabin they can be at their place wherever they are they can be hyderabad or bangalore or china or states and canada and what is happening today is there are many many small uh, uh, firms and concerns many professionals even even uh, medium sized companies in uh, in outside india in other countries who find the lawyers fees very exorbitant and also they cannot give them the time so if there is an indian startup in that area of convincing and drafting the job comes to them you should know to market yourself by using technology again 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. There are courses. Again, I would say, for there are courses in every discipline. Somebody has asked a question: Are there any cyber law certificate courses? Of course, there are courses in cyber law. There are courses in arbitration. There is a, there are courses in each and every discipline. So, where is the course? So many institutes. Just Google and get it. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Oh, there's last one more question. Uh, there is how do I apply for high court uh, lawyership and from now which skills I should start practicing? No, no, you just go to the procedures again. I would say Google and um, just I mean apply at that time, but first you uh, enroll yourself with the, the bar council, complete your law graduation, enroll yourself with the bar council, and then you can practice anywhere. You don't apply for high court lawyership. You apply for lawyership, no? I don't know. Do you apply for high court lawyership or do you apply for lawyership? No, no, lawyership. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. There's one more question. Does one always require to go to court for arbitration? No, no, no. Uh, it can be, uh, it's not necessary to go to the court actually because arbitration is alternative dispute resolution to reduce the um, load on the courts. It's to reduce the load on the courts and the courts uh, will recognize, uh, will recognize a arbitration uh, conclusion. If you are concluded as an arbitrator, yeah. but. You have to. Uh, you have to be qualified. You have to do that course. So you are uh, recognized as an arbitrator, and the court will recognize the award. The award of the arbitrator. Okay. So, yes. So we don't have. Uh, we have done with all the questions. I yeah, guess. Yes. 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 Over to you, Yamini ma'am. Thank you, uh, Ms. Yamini. It is my immense pleasure to propose the vote of thanks uh, this uh, national webinar on uh, career options in law, counseling and opportunities organized by placement and entrepreneurship uh, cell of the college and uh, center for counseling and wellness management, both the cells of uh, Jirkare College of Law. And uh, uh, we are in association with our uh, 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 YAMU partner, Modern Law College, uh, Pune. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, learned resource person, uh, Sri Prabhakar Timble. Uh, and uh, I wish that students have uh, uh, gained knowledge of uh, knowledge which he has shared with you. And uh, definitely, sir, it is uh, uh, our pleasure to associate with you in this type of uh, program. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, joining us. I would like to thank management of both institutions, Jirkare College of Law and uh, Modern Law College, Pune. Special thanks to Dr. Sunita Achar, Principal of Modern Law College, uh, and Dr. Sapa De Silva, Principal of Kare Law College, for uh, uh, permitting us to organize uh, such a wonderful uh, webinar. Uh, my thanks also goes to uh, Ms. Shital Kaskar for introducing the guest, Ms. Savita uh, Basunde uh, moderating the question answer session. Both are uh, faculty members of Modern College, Pune. Special thanks goes to Ms. Rosanna Korea, faculty in charge of placement and entrepreneurship cell of our college, and uh, other member faculty members of the cells. 
Ms. Archana Purkarkar, Counselor, who is in charge of uh, Counseling and uh, Wellness Management uh, uh, Center of our college. Thanks also goes to Ms. Uh, Yamini Dalvi uh, for uh, comparing the uh, whole uh, webinar. Uh, special thanks to Mr. Abhijit Rege, System Administrator, and his whole team for uh, technical support uh, for this webinar. I thank both uh, uh, esteemed uh, colleagues of both the institutions, Modern Law College and uh, GRK joining us. For joining the uh, webinar. Uh, also, uh, thanks to all the participants who participated in this particular webinar and, uh, and uh, got an opportunity to uh, hear a lecture of a great scholar like uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Prabha Katimle. Uh, thank you, one and all. Thank you very much. Over to Yamin. Yam Yamini, you cannot be heard. Unmute yourself. Thank you all the participants for joining in the webinar. Uh, thank you though to all the YouTube uh, participants as well who are watching us live uh, in large numbers on YouTube. Thank you to the Google Meet uh, participants and thank you to the resource person for the day. Thank you to all the uh, faculty members of both the colleges and uh, all the participants may leave now. Thank you for joining everyone. We end the session here.